Today we might be installing a cooling unit on a Dometic RV refrigerator. So we got everything loaded up in the car. We're gonna head down to the park and see if we can't get that installed today. I haven't taken a look at the refrigerator yet. I've just got the information on it. It's a, it's a Dometic RM 2652, 2652. Uh, I didn't troubleshoot this, but he did say he smells ammonia. Pretty good indications that it needs a cooling unit. So I already did kind of run through the, uh, the repair scenarios with the owner. Uh, they live in this trailer full time and they need a refrigerator. I recommended pulling the refrigerator out and putting in uh, just one of those uh, smaller gar garage refrigerator freezer combos in its place. Uh, it's like $300, $400 now. Uh, whereas a cooling unit by itself is going to be double that. So they insisted that they wanted to be able to still use it on LP mode because this is a gas absorption refrigerator. They opted for the cooling unit. This is an aftermarket cooling unit from Nordic. I found them to be pretty good uh, cooling units. I haven't had any issues with them. Uh, knock on wood somewhere. And I know the follow-up question is, why aren't we putting a, a DC conversion in this? Why aren't we putting a uh, Amish uh, cooling unit in it? It's because they live in it full time and this is what's available right now and they need it right now. So let's get over to the, uh, the park and see if we can't take a look at it. All right, so here we are, this is a 2000 Shasta. Well, I'm just waiting for the owner to open it up for me. It's a pretty nice looking Shasta. Good park model, to be honest, because it's got the two entries and it has a slide on the other side. Let's take a look back here, Let's see what it looks like. <sighs> Definitely nothing ideal. Even a little bit. Take a look on the inside. Mm, yeah, definitely smell the pungent odor of uh, ammonia there. So it is going to be time to change that out. Now, before we change out a cooling unit on a refrigerator, especially because this refrigerator is probably about 22 years old because this is a 2000, and the refrigerator is likely the original one based on the rest that I see here. Make sure the box is in good condition. So if the box is all cracked, the plastic is falling apart, it's probably not a good investment of just changing out the cooling unit. Now on our gas absorption refrigerator, the cooling unit is the actual refrigerator. They're called refrigerating units. The part that you see on the inside, that's just a styrofoam cooler that mounts uh, the, the cooling unit in it. So that, the cooling unit is basically the refrigerator. Now one thing I will note, it is a little bit rough. So I'm gonna pull out the refrigerator from this box in here and of course, she has to made it with plywood, and this plywood is uh, rotten. I'm not trying to add extra work to this, so hopefully the rest of this will be fine underneath there. All right, so here we go. These are the Nordic cooling units. Do make sure you follow all the warning labels on there. You don't want to have to install this a second time for free. Okay, there's our thermal mastic. So far we look pretty good. On these Dometic ones, you wanna check the burner mount. They had a change, and so there could be a flat one sticking up and it sandwiches together. So you wanna make sure that you get that one right, otherwise you got problems again. But when I look at it, I don't see any damage. I don't see or smell any ammonia. So I think we're doing pretty well. Now, this is not a theory of operation video for these gas absorption refrigerators, but, but the refrigerants in these are ammonia and water, and then it's charged under pressure with uh, hydrogen gas. That's why it's flammable. Ammonia has a pretty cool property that its uh, boiling point is pretty, pretty low, if that helps. It's not your standard refrigerant like 134A or 12 or 22. This is ammonia and water. But one of the first things we want to do is make sure there's no propane on because we're going to be undoing that line. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Make sure that one's off. It doesn't hurt to be doubly sure by taking the pigtails off too. I did no troubleshooting on this. This is all just based on what the customer's telling me and its cooling performance. Uh, we'll have to test out afterwards. While I'm in there, I'll check the ventilation because I know ventilation is the number one problem with uh, gas absorption refrigerators. Also, this is 22 years old, so it's been mounted here 
just fine for 22 years. So looking at that cooling unit, it needs to be done. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of, I won't call it penetrating oil, but it is just a little bit of silicone spray right there on this swivel nut on this flared nut so that hopefully it comes off easily without twisting anything. And there's just a condensate drain coming from the refrigerator compartment. Try not to break that one, but don't forget to double wrench it. Always double wrench gas lines. All right. I'll do a high tech method of uh, smelling and feeling on my skin to see if any uh, gas is flowing out, and it's not. Go ahead and unplug here. Looks like somebody's done me a favor and ran the solar wire, solar panel wires through the refrigerator compartment. So hopefully those aren't gonna be the way at the top. Go ahead and unplug the power. This is DC power. This was 110 power. There we go. Yes, they did use scotch locks to make this connection 22 years ago. So the last things that are kind of holding this thing in is going to be the mounting screws, which are probably not into much, which they're not. There's another one behind right there. But uh, I want to travel one thing. The industry has had, the RV industry with refrigerators, especially the refrigerator manufacturers have had fire issues. And uh, this Dometic refrigerator obviously should have probably had its recall done. Now Dometic refrigerators are not as common as a Norcold 1200 series to catch on fire, but there's supposed to be a plate right here and a thermal disc as a thermostat and then a uh, fusible link down below so if this did catch on fire it would lock out 12 volt power so that it would kill the refrigerator which would kill the flame so it would reduce the chances of fire looks like that re recall was never done as only authorized service centers can do a legitimate recall I have not found as a shop owner being a warranty service station for Dometic or any of the manufacturers to be very lucrative but these screws really aren't holding much they're just gonna be in the way pretty much just rip the screw out like that use screws with the unthreaded shoulder on it that's the part that was in the wood and this part was outside the wood of course the wood was rotten anyways but that's another problem from the manufacturers but that's everything on the outside now we have to go inside and start tearing it apart all right so I'm just gonna need a little bit more light in here Put that right there. Much better. <laughs> Hope you guys can hear me just fine. So I did already do an inspection right here. Model number 2652, just like he said. The plastic box itself doesn't look bad. And he's been adding ice in here. And the cooling unit's been going bad. So I gotta get some of the ice out of here. But yeah, this refrigerator section is not even cold at all. I was able to get the frost off of there and that out of the way. I'm just going to scoop out all of this extra frost. I guess that does indicate that, like he said, it was cool enough in the, ref in the freezer. By all accounts, the door seal has been sealing really well. He says it's actually difficult to open the freezer. But if you do get a lot of moisture in a uh, freezer, it's likely your door seal is bad and it's freezing the moisture in the air that's getting past the door seal. Now the irony of having to defrost the freezer because it's not cooling isn't lost on me. But that doesn't indicate that the refrigerator has any control on it anymore anyways. The freezer will be the coldest place and low refrigerant levels can cause issues too like this. But even though it looks like a lot of frost, he also indicated that it won't freeze meat in the in the freezer either. So we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna power through this. Now I already pulled this plastic uh, spacer out. It's just a vent because the back of the freezer is the actual cold spot of the freezer to allow airflow past it. It just pops in there. Just pull it out. I like to pull these screws out first before I pull the refrigerator out. These are what are actually mounting the freezer box to the cooling unit that we saw outside. So let me get those all out. Now while that's defrosting a little bit more, I'll go back down here, as you guys can see in there. 
there are more screws in there and uh, hopefully these don't break. These are pretty rusty. Because this is going to be the heat sink that allows heat from the inside of the refrigerator to get pumped to the cooling unit outside and then released it to the outside. Doesn't make anything cool. It makes, uh, it just pumps the heat outside, which I know is just the removal of heat, which is cold. But for whatever reason, HVAC guys always like to point out that you don't make anything cold. You're just moving heat. That's all we're doing. And then don't forget to uh, save those screws because a lot of times the aftermarket uh, cooling units don't give you the hardware for it. You do make sure they're not broken. So the next step is we just uh, pop this cover off. There. That's what we're gonna find. The upper mounting screws. And then down here underneath this cover, we'll have probably some rotted out screws also here. Let's see how we do. These should be good. Nice. Do let this carefully dangle. Don't damage anything. All right, well, look at that. It wasn't rotten. Out. Just pull that out, hopefully. That's just uh, foam. That's nothing gross. Don't worry about it. Looks gross, but it's just uh, open sail weather stripping that turned into a very fine powder it looks like those are the only screws down there so it's now it's time to pull the refrigerator out now i am likely going to be dropping this thing straight down so i need to move this door out of the way so i don't damage that door so let me just move that real fast that wasn't too bad now it looks like it's probably going to be stuck into here a little bit so let me try to uh, do a little bit of persuasion to get it out Shouldn't need a lot of persuasion, but All right. it looks like we got it started, so we can start pulling it out. Yeah, we're pretty free floating there, but let's make sure we always look on the outside because uh, you don't want to dink on things that got tied up around it. So I do have the electrical cord out of the way. We're not grabbing anything there on the side, so I think we're actually looking pretty good. Yeah, I can just push this out. Excellent. Might as well take a look inside. Make sure those solar panels, panel wires aren't hooked around the plumbing. We're good. Now these units aren't incredibly heavy. I can probably do it by myself. Uh, in fact, I know I can do it by myself. If you, uh, if you need help, always get help. I'm gonna try to just lower it onto my service rug here. And on a nowhere cold refrigerator, I usually take the doors off, but the medics are such a way that you have to take the screws out of the side of it on the hinge side in order to take it off easily, otherwise, you can take uh, the, the screws off, but it's problematic for me right now. So I don't want to damage these doors because they're it's 22 years old and I don't trust that hardware not to break and me get blamed for it. So I'll just prop it up carefully. This is definitely the tight spot here. Okay, not better than I thought it would. I mean, I'm covered in insulation, but we're safe on the ground. Now, to say the quarters in here are a little bit tight is an understatement, but I think I have enough room to lay this down and do the repairs in here. It doesn't have to go outside the RV to do this. But I do want to put some blocks so I don't damage the handles. So just be aiming for this uh, box that came with the uh, cooling unit. All right, so I got it laid down. We got the screws on the inside all taken out. 
And we do have, don't worry, those handles aren't being crushed by the ground, neither are the hinges. So really the next step is just to disconnect all the control components of this uh, refrigerator. It's hard to appreciate, but this uh, frame is going to come with it. This section right there, there's a seam. That's part of the cooling unit. This whole section right there is part of the cooling unit. I'll need the flu baffle. Do whatever. Not grab the flu baffle out of this but on aftermarket one. Let's inspect it and make sure it still exists. Without this, it will not cool on propane. And then these aftermarket ones also generally don't cover or give you a new heater element, which seems silly to me too. And so let me just bend this lock tab a little bit so I don't slice my finger up on camera. There we go. Pull it up and out. These, we'll see how well we do if we have to get a new one. He had this thing running while I was still working on it, so it might be a little bit tight. Yeah, it's pretty tight. I'm not going to try to move that right now. And then I'll have to disconnect, uh, disconnect the burner, uh, the gas valve, and get some of these feet away from it because this cooling unit gets mounted into the feet. So let me just set you guys up. Hope you can watch me do that real fast, and then we'll check back in. Fires are not part of the cooling unit either. Get those out of the way. I'm definitely glad whoever lived in there is gone. Because the control board makes a good uh, parts cover too. It does seem like maybe this heater is going to be a little bit of a problematic issue for me. So let me unplug it from the control board. Time to inspect the burner there. Okay, we'll polish this end up a little bit. So it has a better spark. There's a lot of rust here and I don't want to break anything. So right here's the actual burner. It's a little sturdy, but it's not too bad. Right here's the thermal couple. It had a little bit of um, soot built up on it that I just knocked off, but we'll polish that up too. This is actually what senses the flame and keeps the gas valve open. Fake connectors don't stay on when you need to put them on. But definitely when you want them off, they don't want to come off. Alright. Put this aside and save that. I'm also going to loosen up these feet right here. Because these do clamp down on this bar right down here. There's a ground bus right here we need to disconnect. I think that's an odd size 932nd, of course. Okay. And then here's that condensate tube that gets condensate out of the drip pan from the refrigerator. Definitely disconnect that from the cooling unit. I can move those out of the way. Hopefully, I can slide this out and kind of let it just dangle. I do need to disconnect the eyebrow harness, the thermistor, and the flapper heater. Well, it's not a flapper heater, but there's a heater in between the refrigerator and freezer door that keeps um, 
condensation from forming right where that freezer is really cold and then dripping water down the front of the refrigerator damaging the refrigerator face and the cabinet face and a lot of these domatics you'll find a switch inside that says uh, climate control switch and it just turns off that heater to save a little bit of power climate control switch sounds much more impressive though so pretty much the next step is in a reader Pop this thing off. Remember, it is charged with ammonia, and so if you do rupture it, you could make a big mess and you could choke yourself or kill yourself if you don't have a well ventilated area. Now, on these Dometics, what I have found on these uh, Dometics is that they're actually in there pretty well. Uh, you might need a little bit of effort to break these things out. And it's usually because they use like a spray foam for the uh, the cabinet. And I've seen that spray foam, after they inject it, it uh, connects the cooling unit uh, inside to the foam box. So I don't know why they do it the way they do it. Norcold's usually come across, apart a lot easier. But these usually get stuck right here pretty well. But we took all the screws out on the inside and everything on the, out on the outside. So this lower section's loose. This top section's loose. We just have to break it free from here. Uh, it'll just it'll require a little bit of effort, but we want to make sure that we're not damaging these wires. And let me see how we do. Now everybody has their own methods of uh, breaking it free. Some people get like a big pry bar, a ratchet strap. Uh, I just let the refrigerator tell me how it's going to come apart. exceptionally well. But I do need this. Don't let... This doesn't come with a new one either. Oh, excellent. That wasn't too difficult. Alright, so it did come apart pretty easily. Like I said, they did have a little bit of spray foam that stuck to that plate. Expanding foam, I guess it's not really spray foam. Because they get injected in there. So that's got to get out of the way. The That plate right there is just that other side of the freezer where the screws were. That's what actually clamps it up against the uh, cooling unit. You see the thermal mastic right there, we will be replacing that. The next step is really just to clean this whole surface off so that it's ready for the new cooling unit. That's just glass cleaner. And then the back side of the fins need to be cleaned too. You can see you got a little bit of expanding foam on it too. All right, so I just use a little bit of adhesive remover to get it pretty clean. Uh, don't forget, this is installed in one particular way. The, the screws through it are offset, so do not install this upside down or else you could cause a lot of problems when screwing it on. All right, so I have this pretty clean right here. The offset goes to the tie position. If you have any questions, you might be able to see uh, rust stains trailing its way under gravity. This is the bottom, this is the top. I'll just go ahead and put that back in place so I don't forget to put it on because I've never installed a cooling unit to find out the refrigerator vents fins weren't installed. I mean, I might have, so don't do what I did. All right, so looking at their instructions right here, they want the thermal mastic to be applied right on the tubes themselves, not up on here. Uh, they also say, because on the outside they already put foam all the way around, we don't need to add any foam all the way around. Let me go ahead and put that uh, mastic on. They gave a, a tube of it right here. It does tend to separate a little bit, so you might want to knead it and put it on. That's the uh, return shipping bag for the old cooling unit. A lot 
lot of aftermarket guys want to want it back. Sealant on here, they said a quarter inch, so we'll try to do a quarter inch. So the heat's definitely playing havoc with it. It's not quite as thick as it probably should be, but we got it on there pretty good. I feel pretty good about it. This is going to get smushed down when it comes in con contact with everything anyways. But these cooling tubes are actually what transfers the heat to the refrigerant. And this is just a thermal mastic for it. And of course, we're going to be aiming for screws right here for those fins in the refrigerator. So if you have them upside down, you could end up put a screw through the tube. And we definitely don't want to do that. Always scary. That's the scariest part for me. You should be able to see that foam that they were talking about right here. So you don't have to put the sealant around the outside. All right. So the next step is just put the cooling unit back in, rebuild it, and put the thing back into place. Uh, basically, what I said before, this is just a foam, a plastic box. It's just an ice chest. The cooling unit is the refrigerator, and it just uh, uses that to transfer heat from the inside of the box to the outside. I did go ahead and check the inside because ventilation is a vital part of the cooling unit's operation. So we want to make sure there's nothing blocking the way on the way up. And we look pretty clean down here. This is pretty strong. It's just going to be right there where it was exposed to the weather. Uh, owner didn't tell, want me to worry about it, so I'm not going to worry about it. And I just have this right there because the hot air is coming in. That's blocking just a little bit of it. All right, so my experience have taught me this. I just put the screws in right here, route the wires, then I'm gonna flip the whole thing up on end and put the inside screws in because I don't wanna build this thing and find out that I didn't have the screw holes lined up on the inside. Now, of course, this is the scariest part because you don't wanna hear a hub. Do make sure you have the washers on. If you don't have the washers on, you're gonna have some problems. It's not gonna get tight enough and the screw head will just go through that aluminum panel. See that screw saw that wash is really loose. That's the first one we put in. We just want to crush everything, get it tight. Looks good to me. And then don't forget the ones that have in the refrigerator. Now these can be the scary ones because this whole fin moves around. Kind of Search it out with the tip of the screw until you fill it up, uh, sink in. <sighs> all right, so with all that done, just gonna lay it back down, rebuild the uh, the back of it, and then we'll check back in. But the first thing I'm gonna put back in is gonna be this uh, baffle, because this can be difficult to put back in once this whole thing put back inside the refrigerator. You can do a heater element with the refrigerator in, but not the baffle so easily. But it looks like we got good news after letting it kind of cool off in the summer heat. And the heating element did loosen up. Let's work it back and forth. There's a tube that it slides into, so we're just kind of like working it back and forth and pulling up on it. I know. Maybe we should put a new one in, but I didn't quote for a new one. And this is a not my call as to what to do. Okay, so there we go. There's a heating element. I'll sand that a little bit to get rid of the rust. She's got a little bit of emery cloth on it. I'll just smear it up a little bit. All this is a heating element, kind of like a water heater. It goes in there and makes it hot around that steel tube. It'd be hard to see, but it goes right into that tube right there. We'll just push it in. And we just do want to pretty much bottom it out. Get our insulation baffles back on. There's a longer slot on this side than that side, so it just kind of slides up in there and push down. So I said the baffle pretty much depends, determines where the uh, heating heating coils or the heater is going to go. It has to go down right there. Well, it seems like uh, you say things out loud, and it happens anyways. So these uh, wires actually 
broke on the uh, heater element. So I'm gonna get a new heater element anyways. And yes, on the uh, spark igniter, I used some emery cloth in it too. Just get rid of some of the soot, that's about it. Hopefully it should uh, spark a little bit better. I mean, you're supposed to do that every year as part of an annual maintenance, but that, who does that? We'll do the same thing on the thermistor here. Not thermistor, the thermal coil. I do know what I'm talking about sometimes. All right, so I'm basically done with it at this point. As far as I can rebuild it, I need to uh, get a new heating element to put in, so I'm not gonna put that on. And I need to put the connections over here, so I'm not gonna put that cover on. And to troubleshoot it, I wanna be able to see the flame and the sparker, so I'm not gonna put this on yet. So now I just need to lift it up and put it in place. All right, I'm gonna check on the outside, make sure it's good. And then I got the uh, window screen back out of it. All right, let me just uh, finish rebuilding it. And the good news is this, because I have to do a cooling, because I have to do a heater on it. Before we fire it up anyways, we would want to let it sit for a little bit to uh, make sure we don't get any air uh, pockets stuck in that cooling unit, the coil all the way up. So the amount of time it takes me to go get that heating element and come back and put it installed, should be setting up perfectly amount of time. that climate control switch right there I was telling you about so there's a little heater built in right behind there to keep this from getting really cold and having condensation form on it now much more important than me cleaning up after myself is the next step even more important than checking the refrigerator operation so I disconnected the LP line so, I need to make sure there's not a leak. That's more important than anything. So I'll turn on the propane. We'll do a preliminary test with some soapy water to make sure that what I did didn't leak. And I don't see any bubbles. We'll go ahead and turn the propane back off. And do a drop pressure test right here at the stove. So that means we have the system pressurized. We turned it off. All right, I'll turn the stove on. And then I'm gonna bleed off excess pressure. Can I see the needle dropping? Just doing that right here. All right. And then I'll leave it there for a good six minutes to make sure we don't the needle doesn't drop. If it drops, that means we have a leak. Because I did touch one gas fitting on this, it's very important that I do this leak down test to make sure that I'm not responsible if there is a leak in the system that I didn't cause, but because I touched the system, I would be responsible for it. So I need to make sure that I'm not responsible for the entire RV LP leak system. All right, we're looking pretty good. We didn't move. Go ahead and turn that off and we'll get back to work. All right, so I still have to go get the heating element for here. Uh, but I do want to see if the propane works at least. So I got the propane back on and we'll fire it up. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on into auto mode, even though we don't have 110. That way, if I were to unplug it, because it doesn't know there's not a heating element on right now. Plug it. You should see a loss of 110 and go to propane. Immediately. Well, the good news is I did find one. The bad news is they went up in price substantially more than I thought they were going to. So the wire's a lot stronger looking. Well, I got it in there. I'll just button this thing up. Okay, so I have it turned on on AC. Got our amp clamp here. We'll put it on there and we're pulling 2.1 amps. It's not too bad. So now I just have to finish putting it together and then we'll run a few tests, but 
it'll be in this heat 24 hours before I can even say whether it's working or not, to be honest, so. All right, well, that was pretty much the replacement. I mean, we still have to wait about 12 to 24 hours before we can even say whether it's working or not. So I don't, I don't want to say I'm done, but I'm as done as I get, can get today. So I will definitely have to call tomorrow. That was replacing the cooling unit on a Dometic RM2652. It's going to be very similar on most Dometic uh, freezer refrigerator combination units. Uh, Three-way refrigerators just have one more heating element. Uh, it's a DC heating element, and they'll work pretty much the same way. It did light on propane. We have the baffle in. We checked it on 110. It's pulling a good amperage on it. And the freezer, when I left, it was starting to get cool, not cold. But uh, we're going to hope everything goes all right. I'm going to keep uh, tabs with the customer. And uh, if not, I'll be checking back in, and there'll be a follow-up to the video, I guess. I got good news, guys. I'm back here at the Shasta at the cooling unit I'm picking up because it cooled just fine. We did good. There's definitely a thousand different ways. Well, maybe not a thousand different ways we could have gone with the refrigerator. With the refrigerator repair. I'll let you guys discuss it in the comments what I did wrong. But at the end of the day, the owner of the Shasta and the refrigerator wanted to have a refrigerator that would work on propane and electric, and they wanted cold food as soon as possible. So a new Dometic refrigerator, maybe that would have been a route I could have recommended if there was time and availability of the refrigerator. A brand new refrigerator might have been the best option as far as reliability goes, because now you aren't dealing with a 20-year-old box and controls. Uh, but... The refrigerator wasn't going to fit out that front door easily without doing a lot of modifications. Uh, a similar size garage 110 refrigerator that would have fit in the opening. That'd be a good route to go to. A lot cheaper, but it would not work on propane. Or I know a lot of people would have said you should have gone with the uh, 12 volt compressor style. But again, the owner does need cold food now and not in a week or two when it shows up. And then it also risks showing up damaged and then extending out for another two weeks as we ship that one back to get another one in uh, not saying that was what would happen but it does run the risk uh, the cooling unit is kind of a, the most risky option because i didn't get to troubleshoot it and find out if the cooling unit was bad i could only go on what the owner had told me uh it's kind of a little scary and uh in the middle of summer trying to cool off of these refrigerators in arizona doesn't work ideally anyways so this is the route he went with and i'm happy to report it worked well uh, they're in it right now so i can't show you the the temperatures but we're doing really well thanks a lot for watching guys that was uh that was fun but i'm picking up this cooling unit because this cooling unit manufacturer wants the core back they uh, have a prepaid uh, shipping tag for it and that will validate the warranty for the cooling unit that we installed. And I want to make sure the owner has that warranty. All right, guys, I got. Okay, I got the. Okay, guys, I got the. Uh... Okay, guys, I got everything loaded up, and it's time to. A Dometic RM tool. Now we're going to see if it leaks down. <clears throat> uh, single uh, double door on most Dometic, on most Dometic double door.